government as before rallied for mechanization of agriculture through the distribution of such equipment with the aim of growing the hectares of fields under various crops. President Yori Museveni has now set the tone for yet more discussion following a pledge to support farmers with 18 million hand holes. So this is not in contradiction with the mechanization. As far as the medium and large scale are concerned, those will use uh, uh, tractors and agricultural machinery. But the, the smaller ones, uh, the hose, will definitely benefit them. A key question, however, is how far the hand hole can go towards driving the country's agricultural sector growth to desired levels. Yandongo, that has been proven. That commercial, I mean, commercial maize production in, in that part of uh, the country has been achieved through mechanization. And uh, to expand food production for the growing population, we need to increase, I mean, we need to expand more land. And we have to do it optimally. We have to do it quickly. The seasons are catching up, the, the weather has changed. So you can't, the best way of, I mean, I mean moving, going around uh, variability in weather and so on is via mechanization. Some argue that Uganda actually needs a more deliberate drive towards full mechanization of agriculture, making use of tractors given its vast land size with considerable capacity for output. If the government did a little bit more, to mechanize agriculture, you get it, that would be something that would help. If we did more in packaging some of our fruits, packaging some of our products, we would definitely have a competitive edge and be the food basket of the region, you get it, because look at Southern Sudan with the war that is going, going on over there, look at uh, Kenya. There are, however, critical issues that will determine the success or failure of this approach to agricultural transformation effort. Is the land tenure system supportive of this approach? And we have enough resources to achieve this at a massive scale. Again, I started promoting agriculture, commercial agriculture in 2000 with our, what we called the Big Push Strategy. And at the beginning, everybody looked at us as though we were crazy. They all believed in smallholder farmers and let's help, let's give him this, let's give him that. We said no, let's bring in the educated, let's bring in the elite, let's bring in the middle class that actually has a bit of money to invest. According to the World Bank, 71.2% of land in Uganda is arable, albeit with smallholder farmers, whose output per acre is barely half by any level of international standards. It can vary between 10 hectares to about 50 hectares per day. Obviously, like I said, depending on, on ground conditions, the sort of equipment that the customer is using behind the tractor, and, and, and a couple of things, external factors that, that, that weigh in on that as well. Unlike Kenya and lately Tanzania, whose policies towards agribusiness have attracted large-scale investment in commercial agriculture. In this, some argue Uganda still has gaps to fill. And among the major inputs that have been uh, clearly uh, documented in the National Development Plan 2 is uh, use of uh, inputs like fertilizers. And then on top of that, there is a clear indication from government that they recognize that uh, Irrigation is a priority area that needs to sort among the inputs and then mechanization. And then we have also the component of value addition and the strengthening institution, I mean institutions. Nevertheless, the Uganda National Farmers Federation believes that new strategies are needed in attracting and retaining private sector capital into the agriculture sector. Farmers are not accessing it easily. The conditions are still uh, too high for farmers to do. But if that is sorted out, and then private individuals are enabled through credit to get tractors at a fair interest rate. As the debate rages on, despite employing majority of Ugandans and possessing a huge potential for macroeconomic transformation, the agricultural sector got 479 billion shillings in the current budget, comfortably trailing sectors like education, infrastructure and defense, raising questions in some quarters about the country's priority sequencing. Reina Ogen, NTV.